to our sources. The attacks were aimed at catching the attention of a man whose identity remains. Oh, Detroit has a cancer, and that cancer is crime. A new crime wave sweeping Detroit has already claimed the lives the of 21 police officers. The provokes a question. Can we put our safety into the hands of a machine? An OCD holds the scalpel. What's hiding in that metal head of yours? I think we can both agree that you are no ordinary police officer. Reinforcements have arrived. Those trigger-happy maniacs have a ton of hostages. Drop it, scum. Anyone expecting a silver free? Contact! It's Robocop! It's that service box, isn't it? I am detecting a short circuit. Wakey, wakey! We're looking at the map of this place, and it's huge. OCP tracking device torn out. I am going to follow the blood trail. However, one aspect of your composition that has been severely neglected is your human side, your brain. We must smash that thing! I've heard people refer to you by different names. Okay there, Murphy? Fire at will! I'm curious to hear which one you prefer. My name is... I'm the many talented Mr. Jefferson, and I just finished Robocop Rogue City, and this was one of my most anticipated games this year, and I waited patiently, hoping to God they wouldn't screw it up. Robocop has a number of video game adaptations, but none of them are what I would call good. Uh, but here was yet another chance to see if someone could finally translate one of the most iconic movies of all time into video game format. Long, long before Pulp Fiction, Robocop was the original bad motherfucker. You're gonna be a bad motherfucker. <laughs> in the first movie, Officer Murphy was brutally murdered in the line of duty and his remains were used to create the walking tank known as Robocop. He's part man, part machine, and all cop. While also being both a Jesus and a Frankenstein allegory simultaneously, and in the movie Robocop 2, OCP tried to duplicate the success of Robocop by making Robocop 2. Um, not the movie, it's the second model in the Robocop line, which just happens to have the same name as the movie it's in. In that movie, it's revealed that Robocop is a unique success as attempts to replicate him have ended in absolute failure. And when they finally do manage to create another functional cyborg, they immediately lose all control over it and it goes on a murderous rampage. And the prototype remains the only successful model ever created. In the third movie, OCP decides to go all out to make Delta City happen because they are going bankrupt and they need to convince the Japanese to purchase the company. OCP creates its own private army to run the people out of their town and that group recruits the local gangs and arms them with military grade gear while the Japanese help OCP by sending over a trio of very silly ninja androids and Robocop gets a, a, a jetpack and a gun arm because this this is a very silly movie. Also, Anne Lewis dies, um, presumably because the actress was so embarrassed at how bad the script was that she told the director, uh, just shoot me, and they did. Also, the old man, the head of OCP, just kind of mysteriously vanishes with an offhand remark from the new CEO. Remember the old man? Everyone's expendable. Which suggests that they fired his ass after the events of Robocop and Robocop 2, but that is literally the only mention of this major character in that movie. Robocop Rogue City takes place between the second and the third movies, meaning Anne Lewis is still alive and they get to bring the old man back as CEO of OCP, which is an excellent place to start a new story. Without going into spoilers of the story of Rogue City, it is a clever combination of all three movie plots, interweaving familiar pieces of these stories to create a totally new narrative. You revisit the side of Murphy's death, gangs are weaponized against the city just like in the third movie, and there are several elements of Robocop 2 that creep into the story as well, and the effect is... While you are playing a unique story that fits perfectly in between the second and third movies, 
you are also still getting the experience of playing through the first, second, and third movies, but without the silly jetpack and gun arm and the, the, the ninja nonsense, thank God. Robocop feels like Robocop. He is a walking tank resistant to anything that isn't military grade gear, but he is slow, he is methodical, and he's an unstoppable force of nature, and the gameplay really, really reflects that. Robocop feels like it's an on-rail shooter, but without the rails, because you can move freely, but you move at the pace of Robocop. This isn't a problem because you're still a walking tank, so you can constantly advance on the enemies while taking all of their gunfire and making precision headshots, shooting grenades out of the air, ricocheting bullets to hit enemies hiding behind cover. There are also an assortment of firearms you can pick up from dead enemies, but Robocop comes equipped with his signature Auto 9, which has infinite bullets. The Auto 9 is a unique gun that manages to stay relevant as you can upgrade the circuit board in the gun. After doing some very simple puzzle solving, you can unlock bonuses like piercing bullets or full auto fire or even no reloading ever again. Which makes perfect sense because Robocop's arm is actually an extended magazine connected directly to the gun in his hand. Robocop is an RPG with like experience points and stat points and you can further enhance Robocop's abilities through those stat allocations which will unlock abilities like the ricochet shot or increasing your armor to the point where there is a chance for enemy bullets to ricochet right back at them. Experience is earned through combat, from locating evidence, finding secrets in all the levels, and doing side quests and writing tickets for parking violations because after all, Robocop is still a cop. There is an emphasis on exploration as after each game chapter, Robocop receives a evaluation which lets you know how much you missed in the previous section. which. I feel helps encourage replayability, especially given that finding these secrets gives uh, a nice hefty XP reward during the evaluation segments. Peter Weller is the star of Robocop and Robocop 2, and he returns to play the iconic character in Rogue City. The rest of the voice cast is good, but Peter Weller just is Robocop. And hearing that computer modulated voice coming out of that face in a game that is essentially the fourth movie in the franchise is more than I could have ever hoped for. The music in the game is of course amazing as it's based off of the original score and the theme from the movie shows up at the most perfect moments. There was one section of the game where I was really happy because I finally got one of the things I had been waiting very patiently for the entire game. And then I noticed the main theme from the movie kicked in and it was just amazing. Oh fuck yes! Another high mark for the game is the radio commercials. They are just as soul crushing as the television commercials from the original movie and I had to stop each and every time I saw a radio just to hear what new terrible advertisement was waiting for me. Dad, what does a fiction mean? And who's a debt collector? Why can't I open the door for him? 
Dad, tell me the truth. Are we poor? Dad? Dad! I'm tired of your kids asking annoying questions? <laughs> you just want to relax after a long day of work, but someone won't let you? Are we going to be okay? Dad, I'm scared. Snoozers. Sleeping pills for kids. Ah! Just one pill can guarantee five hours of peace. Nap time just became your decision. Sleep tight, son. <sighs> I'm tired. Because There's... you deserve a peace of mind, too. <laughs> Movies for kids. The game looks fantastic. The city looks like it did in the movie. The OCP building is just perfect. The construction site where Murphy was shot looks exactly right. And quite frankly, this game does just about everything right. And I only have one real major complaint, but it is a doozy of a complaint because it's something they really, 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 really needed to get correct. And they just didn't. I am afraid the Ed 209 fights are all complete dog shit. I, I get it. Ed 209 is a pretty unreliable piece of hardware and it's an unstable robot, but there's no good reason for it to be so stupid and useless that it stands still and unloads its weapons harmlessly into a wall while I just empty clip after clip of ammo into it from safety. There are a lot of things they could have done with Ed 209, like make its joints breakable so you can slowly disable its ability to move or aim. There is a hidden missile compartment that opens up when it's ready to fire, and Robocop should have been able to shoot that in the slow time mode, like for a huge bonus damage. The sensor array is already a weak point, but shattering it doesn't really hinder Ed 209. You just do crit damage when you shoot it. Every single time I fought in Ed 209, the fight went exactly the same, and it was always the worst part of any stage. They aren't hard, they're just boring, and that's a real shame because Ed 209 deserves to be just absolutely terrifying and fun to fight. Ed 209 is not the only oversized enemy in the game, but that other enemy is done so much better, it, it's not even funny. Even with the terrible Ed 209 fights taken into consideration, Robocop Rogue City is a fantastic game with a fantastic story. It's definitely not a perfect game, there are plenty of rough edges I hope that they sort out before I play it again, and so far I haven't seen any indication of the future plans for Robocop Rogue City, but the developers who made that game also made Terminator Resistance, which received support and updates for like two years after the initial release, and the final update for the game, the Annihilation Line, is apparently a fantastic DLC to cap off what was already a fantastic game. Or so I hear because I haven't actually played Terminator Resistance. It's, it, it's not like I have an excuse either. I have owned the game for years and never bothered to install or play it. Probably because I am a huge Terminator fan and I was just afraid it was going to be bad. But now that I have played through Rogue City, I really want to check out Terminator 2. Uh, that, that's T-O-O -O as in also and not as in the movie Terminator 2. Wait, shit, I already made this joke about Robocop 2 earlier. Damn. I am the many talented Mr. Jefferson and I, I could not be happier to own Robocop Rogue City. It was a genuine delight to play through even if it is not perfect. Uh, I highly recommend this game to anyone and especially to Robocop fans. And if you're not a Robocop fan, I'm, I'm not sure I even want to know you. Thanks to my subscribers, my channel members, the people who hit that thumbs up button, and to anyone who has made a donation on my channel. I will be back again to talk about another game, probably amazing games, un unless I finish my Silent Hill Ascension review, in, in which case uh, it, it will be the game review equivalent of sticking your arm into a filthy, disgusting, clogged toilet which is a reference to a much, much better Silent Hill game. Until then, toodles.
get it. This is way too gross. Who would even think of doing something so disgusting? Yeah, see, that fire is bulletproof. I think it still thinks there's a door there. I have to reload. Whatever that wall's made out of, I want to be made out of it too. It's plastic, bitch! I'm trying to find a spot where I can hit him and he can't get me. I think he gave up. Oh God! <laughs> He's got missiles, guys. 